So hello, everybody. And uh, depending on which part of the world you are joining us from, it's either a, a good morning, a good afternoon, or maybe for some of you even a, a good evening. But uh, to all of you, wherever you're joining from, a very warm welcome to day two of the conference. Uh, my name is Dan Craft, and uh, I'm uh, uh, honored to have been asked by CITC and ITU to, uh, to act as the master of ceremonies for, for this conference. Um, so yes, as I said, welcome to you all on behalf of all of the all of the organizers. Um, yesterday we had a, a fantastic day. We had uh, four uh, really interesting panel discussions. We had two keynote presentations. We also had the first of our uh, thinking points from uh, uh, esteemed academics that we're going to be having throughout the course of the week. And we had, of course, uh, the, the grand opening where we were delighted to be joined by uh, um, dignitaries from both CITC and ITU. If you missed any of the proceedings from yesterday, then I wanted to remind you that all of those are available to, to watch again. Uh, so a link will have been sent out to all of you, uh, I think this morning, uh, or just before the event, I should say, uh, with details of how to access all of the recordings from yesterday's presentation. So if you did miss any of the sessions yesterday or wanted to watch any of those back, then you should be able to do that uh, and find the details in the email that was sent to you this morning. And that's gonna be the same throughout the duration of the event. Uh, there's going to be uh, all of the sessions, all of the all of the different presentations. The sessions are being recorded, so you'll be able to follow exactly what's happening uh, and watch back if you wanted to afterwards. So next on to uh, today's uh, proceedings. So uh, straight away we have another very very busy day. So I wanted to move straight into the uh, the, the the proceedings for today, the program for today, and we're delighted to start the day with uh, another esteemed keynote speaker, our third keynote presentation. Uh, and uh, it's uh, it's a fantastic way to uh, to kick off things today. So I'm sure that everybody is uh, is well aware of the well documented recent issues that have been faced by uh, OneWeb. Um, but there was some fantastic news for the company just a few weeks ago uh, when it was announced that uh, that they have now emerged from bankruptcy and have a plan to start commercial connectivity services in late 2021. And it's an honour to uh, to have with us here today, Mr. Sunil Bharti Mittal. Uh, the executive chairman, the new executive chairman, I should say, of OneWeb, and uh, Mr. Mr. Mittal, welcome. It's an honor to have you with us, and uh, we're really looking forward to hearing from you a keynote presentation and a perspective on how you feel that uh, LEO satellite technology is going to connect the world. So, Mr. Mittal, the floor is yours. Well, thank you very much, uh, Dan. I'm delighted to be part of this uh, wonderful initiative set up by CITC and ITU. Um, as most of my industry peers and uh, keen broad, uh, broadband and telecom watchers know, I have been on this uh, road of telecommunications for now over two and a half decades. Uh, I was right there when uh, the world moved from the old fixed line phones to push button phones to then going towards 2G, 3G and 4G rollouts globally and now on to 5G. Having spent very long years in building uh, networks in um, less developed countries, emerging economies like India, I know the pain and the costs involved in laying out fiber and even the terrestrial mobile networks to every person in the globe. It is therefore no surprise that today uh, the US led by FCC is still in the throes of rolling out universal service obligation funds the recent art of auctions that you all may have watched to push industry towards covering those last few hundred thousand, few million people left, even in advanced markets like US, who don't have broadband connectivity and broadband availability to be part of the internet and new digital revolution. So imagine countries in sub-Saharan Africa, large population countries like India, Bangladesh, Indonesia, and many other countries in Latin America which will have long, long years, if not decades, for every citizen of them there to be covered by a broadband signal or a fiber. Something had to give. And for a long period of time, the traditional geo uh, satellite providers have been trying to fill the gap of providing uh, the last billion and a half, two billion people left on the planet not properly covered by internet. Uh, we all know that uh, uh, only about 12 to 15% of land mass of the world is having a radio signal. 
and while yes most of the populations uh, do get covered within this landmass but there are unfortunately people out there who need these communication services and get neglected country after country country put out universal service obligation funds uh, try to promote subsidies to reach those last uh, few customers but it just never happens through a traditional medium i think time has come to change all that now just like mobile telephony changed the face of communications in the world i think leo satellite connectivity is precisely uh, holding that promise for the globe i am delighted that we have been able to bring back uh, one web into life and are ready to launch our uh, first rocket post its new ownership sometime later this month adding 34 36 new satellites to the 74 satellites that are already up in space why am i excited about uh, leo uh, constellation to provide broadband connectivity of course amongst a lot of other benefits that leo constellation will provide in terms of eventually pnt services uh, climate uh, agenda defense and government needs in those difficult terrains the reason is simply uh, experience for the customers reason is simply the low latency uh, reason simply is providing high capacity high bandwidth at affordable costs to all in the world as we all know uh, setting up of leo uh, constellation is fairly new concept it has been thought of for a long period of time but only handful of companies are now have taken the lead in pushing forward the leo agenda and we along with other two or three players are pushing uh, this reform uh, in a in a fast paced manner a leo constellation costs anywhere between 5 and 1/2 to 7 billion dollars it's an expensive proposition to put up this telecom network in space but once up there uh, there is no parallel to it at 30 35 milliseconds latency uh, having uh several hundred uh, satellites up in the uh space orbit covering coverage for the entire landmass oceans mountains deserts jungles this is the best uh, possible way and affordable way to reach uh, the final objective of connectivity a uh, few years back uh, a meo constellation in the form of o3b was launched and the o3b stood for the other 3 billion at that time there were still 3 billion people out in the globe uh, which were not connected of course that number has thankfully come down because of the great efforts that the mobile terrestrial industry of mine across the world has been putting up but yet there are still billion and a half people to be connected as i said a leo constellation uh, being uh, set up by one web will have 648 satellites uh, orbiting at 1200 kilometers uh providing uh, services uh, uh to the ground there are other constellations which are coming at different um, uh orbital uh, you know uh, slots in the space and they will have their own uh, uh management of their satellites which are fast coming up uh, through one or two other players our applications uh, that uh, we envisage through one web satellite our immediate target is to look at uh, rural broadband that will be the prime focus enterprise customers those offices uh, those factories those uh, out depots distribution centers critical applications of the government they will be connected through uh, one web satellite uh, constellation then of course we will have cellular backhaul my own industry needs uh, a lot of uh, backhauling we currently use uh, uh, geo and meo combination the experience remains very poor the latency is very high at 560 milliseconds on a geo and still about just under 300 milliseconds on a meo uh, program uh, we will then have a huge uh, market uh, that requires services of these kinds in the maritime space where uh, the freight ships steamers yachts boats and all the uh, fishing activities will need to be connected and last but not the least will be the aviation where we are seeing now early signs of communications up in the air most of the new age uh, new generation um, airlines are now putting up wifi services uh, for the benefit of its flying passengers 
with the low latency being provided by Leo, this will again become a game, game changer. And communicating while flying from one destination to another will become a seamless and a happy experience like one sees in the terrestrial networks for the last several decades now. So these are the applications, and you can see there are a plethora of applications on the connectivity side. Then, of course, there will be PNT, the positional navigation and timing applications uh, to provide uh, accurate locations um, uh, and provide navigational aids to all the mobility uh, industries. We hope to uh, then move on to other critical applications that may be required in our Gen Next by various uh, government users, uh, defense programs, and those will be taken care of as and uh, when we move forward. What does this industry need today? More than um, you know, strong support from the regulatory bodies, the government, uh, what is required here is to ensure that the ITU's Sharmul Sheikh agreement, which was a huge revision over the previous uh, uh, procedure of allocating spectrum, is honored by all the signatory countries. Uh, the uh, spectrum allocation is now much more tighter. It's uh, monitored in a way that there is no spectrum squatting, which holds great promise for this industry because, as you know, uh, uh, unlike the terrestrial radio network where the spectrum uh, and frequency assignments and frequency management uh, is very controllably uh, managed, in space, it's really going to be uh, a whole lot new experience to deal with hundreds and sometimes thousands of satellites flying in different orbital slots to manage the spectrum uh, uh, interference and ensure that each uh, constellation is doing its job as envisaged under the ITU and FCC uh, assignments. This will be an area where we will want the help of the regulators to ensure that no uh, new investments uh, come into space without proper coordination with the existing authorized uh, constellation uh, providers. Other area would be the uh, ground station networks. As we all know, it will be extremely important for countries to have control over their data uh, and other, other activities being provided by OneWeb. And here, the government must put up liberal policies uh, to allow uh, ground station networks to be put up in their respective countries. Thankfully, very large number of countries are uh, having open door policy. And some of those who are having a tighter control regime should uh, make uh, LEO availability subject to fulfilling certain conditions which satisfy their uh, legal interception needs, uh, their security needs, their privacy needs, and above all, the cyber um, uh, issues that uh, plague a lot of uh, uh, countries, companies, and uh, ensuring that proper uh, handshake between each regulatory uh, regime of the country and constellation provider is in place. Cost to set up these um, uh, landing stations, provision of fiber connectivity to these landing stations, providing appropriate land parcels should also become very, very important in the agenda of rolling out the LEO constellation ground network at the fastest pace. Last, I would say, but not the least, and a very important element of this is going to be user terminals. It must be in the endeavor of our industry, uh, along with the existing players, to ensure that user terminals are available and plentiful for those rural uh, broadband uh, users, especially schools, hospitals in rural areas, at price points which are affordable uh, for its proliferation at a very large scale, at a massive scale. And then, of course, there will be needs of uh, very specialized antennas for defense and uh, other critical applications, including enterprise. And this will be the third element of uh, the whole game. And a number of uh, companies have already taken uh, lead position in manufacture of user terminal. Uh, I would, uh, in closing, like to say that uh, the world should sit up and take notice of this new development. Just as mobile transformed uh, the landline space by pushing the agenda through uh, radio networks, I think you will start to see the LEO uh, constellations start to push the agenda beyond the frontiers of terrestrial radio networks. We believe that uh, uh, the uh, applications that we have just laid out and uh, illustrated will provide a force multiplier for many other industries to start to flourish 
around the connectivity uh, being provided by the by the Leo constellation. Cloud services uh, will need that nth degree of um, security, nth degree of connectivity in terms of failure. The only way during disaster, uh, you know, human tragedies uh, is going to be provided through connectivity by the satellite uh, uh, industry. And it is therefore important that uh, the people who are building various uh, applications, whether in the area of cloud, IoT, uh, and other industries uh, which, are, which form a digital ecosystem like e-commerce, e-health, e-agriculture, uh, financial systems, the fintech industry, all now start to uh, take uh, into account the development of the satellite um, uh, provision of connectivity so that their products and services uh, start to uh, discuss with the satellite industry and provide those services as well. So with that, let me say, I remain extremely excited about the uh, LEO uh, opportunity. Uh, One web through our efforts will be up and running for 50 degree north uh, by uh, uh, late uh, quarter of last year, uh, next year. Uh, therefore by October, November 21, we will have most of the Northern Europe, uh, Alaska, the polars uh, covered. And by May, June of 2022, which is less than 18 months, one web constellation will cover the entire globe, every square inch of this world to provide that superior low latency, high speed connectivity to the world. With that, I would like to uh, once again, thank ITU uh, for having set up this opportunity for all of us to discuss uh, the various futuristic opportunities and CITC for having put this together. Thank you very much. Mr. Mittal, thank you very much. And uh, it's absolutely fascinating to hear from you the uh, the, the very exciting plans that you have for, for OneWeb and uh, and more broadly, uh, how, uh, how you see things developing over the next few years with, with, with Leo, Leo technology. So, so thank you so much for that. Um, we have a lot of questions coming in. So if you did have another couple of minutes just to, 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 to stay for a few questions, if that's okay. Fantastic, yeah. thank you. So, um, so as I said, we have, have lots of questions coming in. So um, maybe let me start, we have a question, and actually we have two questions which possibly I can, uh, I, I can link together with this. So we have a question from uh, Majed Alkuli from CITC. Uh, who asks, what are the challenges facing OneWeb other than financial issues to launch the services uh, and how will OneWeb compete with other players in the same field? And I, I guess almost linked to that, we have a question from Thomas Seal who asks, what are OneWeb's differentiators versus Starlink and other Leo services? So uh, I don't know if you're able to uh, give us a few thoughts on, on that. Yeah, as I said, uh, you know, it's a very capital in intensive industry. It's a space uh, a bet, which is always having its own, uh, you know, risks, which one has to uh, keep in mind. Uh, but the space industry is developing at a very fast pace to mitigate uh, the issues that may emerge in this new frontier. Uh, OneWeb will have a number of spare satellites in its uh, constellation to ensure that if there were unfortunate, um, uh, you know, issues coming with a few satellites, it'll be able, able to fire up some of the additional spare satellites to provide those, uh, uh, you know, fill up those uh, holes that may come up in the constellation. Uh, investments are large, as I said, between five and a half to seven billion dollars. Thankfully, OneWeb spent a lot of money in the first phase, and that's where a lot of money goes in, booking the launches, booking the rockets, building satellites. OneWeb had, has its uh, leading edge uh, manufacturing facility in Florida where it's manufacturing satellites. Uh, more than one, one and a half, two satellites are being manufactured daily. We have uh, 16 launches um, uh, now uh, planned with uh, one starting uh, in the next uh, less than two weeks. And then every month until we complete the constellation, we will have a launch go up uh, and complete the 648 satellites. The investments that are required to be put in here and after um, uh, is about two, two and a half billion dollars of which half has already been arranged between us and the British government and one or two other uh, investors who have uh, shown interest. I don't see raising capital for this uh, wonderful project uh, for the balance amount will be any issue. At Bharti in the last 18, 24 months, we have raised over $12 billion. Uh, so I don't see that uh, to be an issue with uh, strong sponsors like Bharti uh, which runs uh, you know, the world's second largest mobile network in across 17 countries, the raising capital would be an issue. 
What would be critical is to ensure that we set up our ground stations with the help of the regulators and governments at the, at the pace that is required, because in the next uh, eight, 10 months, we have to cover, as I said, 50 degree north. So many countries in that uh, upper uh, areas need to be uh, set up for service, and that's where our focus is going to be. And uh, we have all our vendors lined up. We have a galaxy of very strong vendor uh, community, which is supporting uh, OneWeb. Uh, many years of work has already gone in, so I will not overtly worry about completing the uh, constellation and generating demand for our services, uh, starting with uh, sometime late uh, next year. As to the competition, uh, Bharti is a product of competition. I would have not existed had we not been allowed to uh, provide competition to PTTs way back in 1992 when India broke its monopoly, state monopoly to invite private sector. Uh, India has seen one of the most brutal competition uh, with mobile operators going up to 12 and now coming down to three uh, big private sector operators and Bharti HL continue to remain a leading player in India, in uh, Sub-Saharan Africa and South Asia. So we welcome competition. We will work uh, closely and uh, uh, have tremendous cooperation uh, to create an industry ecosystem. That's what we have always done. I'm an industry player. I build consensus. We fight like hell in the marketplace, but for industry standards, for technology, for taking waste, and importantly, a very important uh, issue that uh, the world is going to grapple with is going to be space debris. And uh, we need to make the space a safe place. We need to ensure that uh, other players like SpaceX, Amazon, OneWeb, and whoever else comes in are responsible space players. Uh, I see no difference uh, uh, between one or the other uh, players in the market. Everybody will have their new strategies to attract new customers, and uh, OneWeb will do its every, everything possible in its uh, command to ensure that it is a customer's uh, first choice across the world. Perfect. Thank you. And we are just slightly out of time, but if, if it's okay, we have one, one more question. Um, so we have a question from uh, Dean Bubbly, uh, who asks, uh, what is the scope for GPS uh, capability from the OneWeb constellation? And uh, if you could maybe talk a little bit about uh, what needs to be enhanced and what are the timelines in, in that side of things? Yeah, so, uh, you know, PNT uh, is a very important um, uh, element uh, of our program. Uh, right now in Gen 1, which are all now uh, being launched uh, in the coming months, we'll have the timing already built into it. Uh, but the positional and navigation will have to wait for the Gen 2, which is, uh, I would say, a couple of years away. But we have the ambition of providing PNT services through OneWeb, uh, uh, which is much more uh, accurate, much more safer from any interception uh, in the space. Unlike uh, uh, the GPS system, uh, we believe that we will be onto this path in the coming years. Mr. Mittal, thank you so much. We could carry on, I'm sure, but uh, I, I know how busy you are and also um, we have a very packed day ahead. So look, I thank you so much for your time. It's been absolutely fascinating to, to hear from you, as I said, about what you see as the, the vision for OneWeb and for, for Leo Technology. And uh, I guess it just uh, is left to me to wish you the best of luck with the very exciting project that you have ahead of you. So thank you so much once again for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Fantastic. Well, Next, we move straight now on to our next session. Uh, so the next session we have is gonna be focusing on spectrum licensing mechanisms to accelerate innovation and adopt emerging radio technologies. Um, so we're gonna be starting with that session very shortly in around about 30 seconds or so here on the main stage. Uh, so please don't go away. Uh, that will be starting very shortly. Uh, and then I'll be back after that session to, uh, to then uh, lead on to the rest of the program. But once again, I would like to, uh, to say, a uh, huge thank you to Mr. Sunil Bharti Mittal for uh, that fascinating insight to open today's proceedings. And as I said, we'll be back in around about 30 seconds or so with the next session. Thank you very much.